The game is, I mean, vastly different, and if I can say, but it's really the same. Uh, at the, you know, when I played in the original six teams uh, for Boston, and they were, everybody was good. At two-way, positional, response time, you had no time to think out there. As expansion came in, it started to get watered down to the point defensively, not offensively. The skills have always been there. The goaltender's equipment has gotten a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. and there, so the numbers kind of stayed the same. And then this, the, the, the Patrick Waugh flop style goaltending shut off lower, uh, that started to creep in. Goaltenders have become very, very good. And there's been an explosion in that area of talent. Uh, offensively, the Europeans have come in. The Americans have tremendous contributions in the Kachuks and the uh, you know, Stevens is, and these guys that can play Barrasso and Goal and, and so, and Roenick, and they, they're just tremendous talent. Uh, so expansion was something that had to take place. And uh, I think somewhere along the lines, they forgot about the defensive aspect of the game, mm -hmm. about both ends of the building. That's all. They have, the players are bigger, stronger, better shape, uh, and, but uh, they're not faster. It's just, just the game is played at a certain speed. And uh, I think it's a great game. My sons love it, uh, and I've always loved hockey. And whether it changes, it, but it's kind of stayed the same. There's still only a few things you can do to get out of your own end. A little bit of a different question. Has the NHL expanded too far? Have we diluted the talent pool too much? What they, when you bring in the, when you bring in the uh, Europeans, yeah. uh, they're a very skilled offensive set of players. Uh, they p are used to playing a schedule that is not nearly as long, so they have dreadful slumps sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when it's moved up a couple of notch in the Stanley Cup, they haven't made that acclimation yet. The Canadian, the North American players, and, and the Canadian American players have, but the European has to get there yet. And once that takes place, it'll be, it'll be terrific. Do you believe that the violence or the fighting is essential to the game? Is that what the viewers want? Absolutely. Yeah. Hockey is not for everyone. Uh, I wish the National Hockey League would learn how to market the game. Yeah, it I is agree. not for everybody, Diane. It's a game that is a physical, it's a violent game played by violent people. Uh, and you're going to get hit. You know you're going to get hit and you're going to get hit hard. You're going to bleed. You're going to lose teeth. Things are going to happen to you. Uh, and you accept that when you sign your contract. Fighting is a, is a essential part, you have a club in your hands. Frustration, it gets to such a level when the guy's hooking you and grabbing you and slowing you down, impeding your progress, when you're not allowed to touch a player without the puck. And they would just call the rules, it would be terrific, but they don't. And so now a player gets frustrated, he starts to slash and spear and using the stick as a weapon. You're far better off dropping the gloves than having at it with fisticuffs. It's over. It's very aerobic. It's usually over in four, <laughs> 45, 50 seconds. Uh, you're balanced on a 16th inch of steel off of frozen water. I mean, how strong can you be? So you, you're ripping, guys. It's a lot of wrestling, but I think it, it gets out frustrations. That keeps the level of violence down. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law the leader of reform in legal education and the leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.